Welcome back to Heroes of the Dorm. We're in the midst of our second semifinal, and at this point, it has looked more or less like domination. My name is Day9. I'm joined by Trixler and Grubby. I mean, what an incredible display of skill out of UC Berkeley. Yeah, I mean, they didn't really make any mistakes, and Illinois didn't make anything happen. It's very tough going up against such a tough opponent. Yeah. But they have one more chance here. And looking at some of the players on Illinois, we want to take a brief moment to talk about Dai Yun, the Kerrigan in that last game, who historically has been a real powerhouse for Illinois. Yeah, it, Dion's a player that's been great throughout the last couple of weekends, but there he seemed a little bit timid, a little bit pulled back before going into engagement. He was on a hero that could allow him to dodge forward. We've seen it before in the past where he can be super aggressive. Here he is smiling on the right side. He plays Toronto. He's a support player. And we saw him actually playing Kerrigan in the last game, which might have been a little bit uncomfortable for him, but we've seen him on Uther before, which can be an aggressive player. So uh, uh, Dion, man, he's got to come back and come into game number two and show how much of a power player he can be. Now, if, if he treats that and he says, okay, that was the warming up and let's begin now. He may be <laughs> able to rally here and do something for his team. Among his team, he is known as a little bit of a star player. So oftentimes you have like one very versatile star player who can play a lot of different roles and kind of the team rallies behind him because they are very talented. And that sort of talented all-star player for UC Berkeley is none other than Suppy. We mentioned him before the match began as a pro gamer. He has played on the world stage before. He has no discomfort playing an audience of this size with stakes this high. It's kind of funny looking at Suppy because he was a very aggressive player in StarCraft II, and here he's playing Brightwing very often at the back of things, but what a bright wingy plays. Yeah, oftentimes you see X uh, or current StarCraft players do very well at the support characters, which in Heroes of the Storm are very complicated characters to play. There's a lot of different abilities and talents to use, and you can see that the multitasking that they learn to command while playing StarCraft mm. really comes into fruition in a game like Heroes of the Storm as a support role. That and the opportunity cost is a big deal on supports, and you're also able to shot call for your team. You're able to look around the battleground. It's, your role is a little bit more passive. You're there to help out your teammates so you can let them know hey guys there's three people on top lane you in the middle go push support players are great at that and we see suppy we saw him a lot actually be in the bottom lane that last game and make a lot of plays he took out a four he helped out in a lane against an assassin and won it by the way pretty sane we are heading directly into the draft it looks like illinois has chosen the map haunted mines and sylvanas being the first pick for uc berkeley is massive now, Savannah is one of the most amazing heroes in the game in general to push, and Haunted Mines, if anything else, is a map where by pushing is of paramount importance. Now, Illinois, by the way, picking Haunted Mines is uh, its really characteristic because they're somewhat the underdog, and Haunted Mines is one of the more chaotic maps where the result is a little bit more up in the air. I find it an intelligent choice to go with Haunted Mines here, and opening up with Kerrigan and Jaina, two of the most important and powerful damage dealers, they really want to make something happen with lightning speed. Illinois is a team that likes a damage dealers, and if there's any battleground that really allows damage dealers to reign supreme, it's going to be Haunted Mines. You have team fights very, very early, and around level four, you're gonna have a lot of engagements, where, which is where talents are actually coming up for a lot of these heroes. So Kerrigan and Jaina Ooh. make sense, because you're gonna be in the bottom of the mines doing some aggressive plays. We see ETC and Tassadar, the follow-up choices for UC Berkeley. Tassadar, an extremely versatile hero, a support that can do massive burst damage with the heroic ETC. With the amount of cluster in the map, the fact that ETC has all these displacement abilities, is so beneficial. And look for Tassadar to play a pivotal role in the defenses of UC Berkeley here, as he can use his shield not only on allied heroes or himself, but also on the buildings to stop the inexorable advance of that Grave Golem that's always pushing down the lanes. Yeah, the team comp for UC Berkeley isn't Whoa. that strong in the early game, but they get better as they move to level 7 on. But oh <laughs> my, <laughs> Illinois is picking up Arthas and Uther. Arthas and Kerrigan? We talked about Diablo and Tron earlier. Yeah, Arthas yeah. Arthas and Kerrigan? Oh, they can be a powerhouse to Together. Arthas, a hero known for slowing abilities such as Howling Blast or Frozen Tempest. Arthas has some of the highest hit points in the game, is almost impossible to take down. And the combo of Kerrigan and Arthas work amazingly together. Slowing, drawing in, and picking off. UC Berkeley going for Suppy. Uh, Brightwing, no surprise there. Yeah. <laughs> 
We already have a rich history of strategical changes as the months of Heroes of the Storm play and training has passed by. And Arthas and Kerrigan used to be really powerful combo together, and now we are seeing that come back here. Look for Brightwing, uh, by, played by Suppy, to try and throw a wrench in the gears there to try and stop Kerrigan from completing her full combo as they're trying to snatch someone off. Okay, the last hero for Illinois is going to be coming up pretty soon. And it's got to be somebody that's going to have major what? engagement. Wow, Stitches Whoa. is going to be the pick here. Okay, a play making okay. warrior. Yeah, you know, the theme to what Illinois is doing is what is called a pick composition. It is to look to hook that primary ability in the top left. Stitches throws a hook out, grabs a hero, and draws him back. It's an excellent way to isolate and eliminate heroes one at a time. Now, Dana, you mentioned the excellent slowing capabilities of Arthas. He can also be built for damage. And look for him to go into that direction even more with a secondary warrior, someone who can bear the brunt of the enemy missile fire uh, a little bit alongside of him. He may even pick up the heroic ability, Syndra Goza. This is going to be an exciting match. Illinois with an unusual mix. Let's see if they can tie the series up. As we go into game number two of match number two, it's going to be UC Berkeley versus the underdogs, Illinois. On the left side of the battleground, Haunted Mines, you're going to see Illinois here with a bit of an aggressive composition. Can't wait to see what they can pull out. And on the very far right, it's going to be UC Berkeley uh, being headed up by Fan. Now, uh, uh, Trixler, if you can show us a little bit about what is Haunted Mines, what is the core concept that these players are going to be going for? Well. What's going to be happening is, let's go ahead and pull up the mini-map. You're going to have two layers uh, to this battleground. On the very top, you're going to have aggressive pushes coming from the golems that will be spawning after our players move to the second layer of the battleground, which will be on the bottom side you see there. They're going to pick up skulls all the way up to 100. How many skulls you get is correlated to how powerful your golem is, and that will eventually be pushing. But already, let's jump into the game as we see Illinois being a bit aggressive, as, as they should, as Wrath has the stitches. Now, Tassadar just used the trait that gives him vision and gave a perfect read on where all of the Mad Banners Illinois players were. So they kind of had the idea that Illinois was going there for a big pickoff. Now the core strategy that we're going to see these players do is push one lane. We're going to see UC Berkeley push the bottom. We're going to see Illinois push the top because of where the golems spawn. Illinois now moving to this top side with all four men, and we see UC Berkeley ripping up the south side. We have a little bit of a game of cat and mouse here because the classical move would be for UC Berkeley to push the top lane, right. but they kind of did the merry-go around there and went to the one they were not expected at. What Illinois wants to do here is meet them head on. They would like to ideally have a four versus four, Let's see if they're going to switch it out again, UC Berkeley, or if they're going to say, OK, we got some damage on the tower. That's it. Oh, the big player to watch is Wrath. His hook oh, success yeah. rate was 90% in previous matches. If he can begin to land hooks, we're going to start seeing UC Berkeley players fall one at a time. Now, Wrath, yeah, you mentioned that amazing accuracy there with the hook, which is both very effective in getting enemy pickoff as well as demoralizing the enemy team. Can you imagine, uh, like, oh, that was close. Fan there dodging the hook. Fan playing aggressive. That's actually one of the best ways to play against the hook is a walk towards it. I, I know it sounds a little bit weird, but you're able to actually juke it a little bit more there. And Fan keeping up that aggression. But Wrath, one time, if he hits that hook, it could spoon or spell disaster. So be careful here as uh, we're going to be seeing Wrath get that hook in a second. He goes oh. for it. Oh, just barely misses a nice field goal. Though he gets three points. Dan, though, does charge in. And Fan in trouble going low on uh, health points, but zero charging back forward. This is an amazing turn back around by UC Berkeley as all five of their members coordinated at the same time. The mines are open. Players now are going to try to collect the majority of the 100 skulls and go underneath to the bottom side. And immediately, Illinois says, nope, nope, would rather not be here. And the question is, can they even get into the mine safely now? It's very risky when you go into the mine's entrance. You're funneling through this really tight location where if there is a trap, the advantage is almost always on the defender. So this gives UC Berkeley the first move into the mines. And they have already collected 40 skulls. And they oh. continue to spread out. However, they do realize their opponents on the bottom left. Yeah. And Zero is already moving down to that location, trying to get on top of Dayon here. If they can pick up Dayon, they'll be able to get a majority of the skulls. And Dayon in trouble gets turned into 
a crab low on HP. Ultimate chasing him. He will go to the top side of the uh, the Haunted Mines, but he's trying to run away and looks like he will not be able to do so. While all of this is going on, UC Berkeley has the majority of their players in the mines in the bottom, collecting more skulls than Illinois. Right now it's 40 to 30, and UC Berkeley heads directly to the Golem. Now, the response from Illinois up top is, well, you know, there's no way we're ever going to be able to get more than 30 skulls, so we're going to go for the mercenary camp in the center of the map. It's a way to apply counter pressure to the enemy. And that's what I love about Heroes of the Storm. There's always a lot of different objectives to be played out here. The major one is that Grave Golem, where the more skulls you collect, the more powerful will be the Golem that rises for you to fight on your side. But there's all these other things you can be doing, like taking the Bruiser camp, taking the Siege Giant camp here, and of course, the oh-so-important and soaking experience in the two lanes on the map. Let's go ahead and look at the Grave Golem. It's actually spawning in the top right corner here for the red team, UC Berkeley. They're grabbing their own gi giants, but the uh, the actual Golem is now spawning in. Remember, it will have a total of 70 skulls for it, and we'll be pushing in the uh, top lane, so uh, it will be coming down pretty soon. And now we also have one in the very far bottom left. See, here's the red one here for UC Berkeley. Look how strong and mighty it is. It's got crystals <laughs> everywhere. Let's go down the one in the bottom left. He's a, he's a little guy, because uh, yeah. he's got 30 skulls here. He's going to have to push down, but he's not as strong. So the blue team, Illinois, is going to have to watch the top lane. Now the question is, is UC Berkeley going to pile to defend the small golem or pile to push with their enormous golem? And if anything holds true, UC Berkeley loves aggression. They are going to gather together. They are going to hope that this grave golem can absorb most of the hits and allow UC Berkeley to maybe get an extra kill and to get an even bigger lead. Now we have a four versus four here, and a one versus one at the bottom. That's going to be a little bit more quiet here. This is the one to look. Look at the Siege Giants. They're adding a lot of damage on the Golem, but watch out for that red circle. It will entangle and pin in place any Illinois defenders. They've got to be very careful to dodge that. Do note, there are four members up here for UC Berkeley, and Suppy is still down in the bottom right corner defending against the Golem. So they, the uh, blue team, Illinois, elected to bring Mr. Burks down here so we can absorb experience, but look how strong this Golem is. Yeah. It's going to help UC Berkeley secure this port, which would give them a nice experience lead. UC Berkeley continues to press onward. There's the hook possible pick, but Fan looks to be trying to evade. Arthas comes from below, and Fan does get taken out. The Golem continues to apply pressure. We're seeing most of Illinois very low on health. Uther falls. Everyone's health oh, is just barely above zero. But UC Berkeley losing two. It's a three for three exchange right now. But with Suppy teleporting in, it looks like the battle goes to UC Berkeley and the Golem continues to shove. Even Fan getting picked off in that fight, he was able to turn around and put all of his abilities on top of his opponents, which got them weak so the rest of his team could clean up. It was a death that he knew was coming his way, but he made the most out of it. And that allowed UC Berkeley to turn around and win that fight. Nicely done there, but I like the aggression from Illinois. It finally came in and it almost paid off for him. Yeah, such a wonderful engagement by both players here. Dayun even getting away initially on that Kerrigan, but jumping in once again, even though he was so low, just to help his team out there. And it was a big wipe on both sides now as they are picking up the pieces here. UC Berkeley with half a level advantage, trying to dodge a fight here, maybe until they reach level 10 and get that heroic talent. Now UC Berkeley interestingly, is going down to the far bottom lane with most of their team. Looks like they're just trying to avoid a confrontation with Illinois. The bottom lane is actually not very important if you're UC Berkeley. The top one is where the Golem pushes, which is what's made it so interesting that they are continuing to pile down south. Sometimes you have to go for what's exposed, though, and they're going to try and grab these turrets because they want to get 10, which will give them heroic abilities. So although they want to push the top lane, as mentioned by Day 9, this was the only play available to them. So now, th that was the 22nd win, though, that Illinois had to make mm -hmm. something happen there. We saw the Yun hiding in the bushes there. A clever move. Now, they don't want to fight right now. It's level 9 versus 10. Illinois needs to run away here. Kanisha Berkeley pushing in. Ooh. They tried to go for the hook. And you know, that hook was actually going to be OK, because it would bring a member underneath the turrets, the infrastructure of Illinois, which would allow for them to get rid of someone very quickly. But now you see uh, Berkeley just snaking around, looking for a potential fight. Illinois desperate to get into the mines and to get a lead there. But UC Berkeley, again, creating two threats. Up at the top lane, UC Berkeley pushing with all five Whoa. right wow. before the mines open up. If you're Illinois, you're going, wait a minute, we're all supposed to be going to the mines. That's not fair. <laughs> and we're seeing UC Berkeley not only take down those towers, but get a two-level lead along with it, 11 Doak, to 9. Doak missed! 
Fan dodged that hook, he telegraphed his intentions wrath there and Fan managed to dodge it. They're now gonna get the jump and enter the mines before, so now they have the option to spread out and get skulls or make a trap. And Illinois, they simply don't know yet. They do not know. In fact, they don't even want to go down quite yet in the top of the map. They're actually moving to the other side of the uh, entrance and trying to potentially come in down that area. No, they've elected to go ahead and oh, go straight no. for maybe mercenaries. In fact, there seems to be indecision here. And you can't have indecision the entire time right now. Berkeley is grabbing 70 oh. skulls. The most dangerous time to not have a clear choice is when the mines are open. We're seeing Illinois step down. Uther trying to get a stun on Cal Zero, but the lead in levels seems to be favoring UC Berkeley and their power is much too high. Kakisho almost falls, tries to get out. Suppy amazingly gets picked off. It's a two for one right now, a two for two, as we're seeing players pop in and down. Literally playing elevator tag, <laughs> trying to it, just escape the enemy, find any opportunity they can. There were two pickoffs on the side of Illinois, but it is coming at a terrible cost. 70 skulls to nothing. UC Berkeley is going to get a 100 skull golem. Well, that's not completely sure yet. Right now they're saying we've got 70. We're happy with 70. We're also happy with 100, but let's wait and see. We're not in a rush to risk anything here. We just had two heroes got taken down from our side. Right now in the back of the mine of Illinois, they're thinking we need to get something here, whether we get a fight, whether we get skulls, we got to do something. They're putting so much pressure on Illinois that they literally can do anything they want. UC Berkeley at some point can go down and grab the 30 skulls, or if we see Illinois go down to get those 30 skulls, they can try and trap them and get into a team fight. There is so much pressure here from Berkeley once again. Now we're in a weird scenario where the skulls are momentarily being ignored and you see Berkeley, they know that eventually Illinois might want to go get those skulls. It looked like they were doing it, but they're coming out again. The risk is here, guys. 70 skulls, no matter what, in UC Berkeley's hands. If Illinois makes a concerted effort to go down there and collect the last skulls, what is stopping UC Berkeley from pushing in a vanilla fashion by just taking their five and going straight for Illinois' keep? This is a brilliant play by UC Berkeley. First, they cleared off as many mercenary camps as they could, and now they're going to the Golem saying, oh. you know, 100 does sound good, but Illinois is stepping in. It's going to be a five on four. Suppy needs to oh, pour fan in. Oh, got taken down. The Syndra goes and got pushed in there. Dayun pulling in. Two takedowns, three takedowns. Almost the ultimator trying to get away there. A wonderful backstab by Illinois as UC Berkeley jumped the gun. It's five versus two. An absolutely stunning turnaround from Illinois, exploiting the fact that there were four in the haunted mines. Suppy was not there. The five on four opportunity that Illinois has been looking for this entire game finally presented itself, but at what cost? We are seeing the Grave Golem at 79 gems, 79 skulls collected. That is going to mean it is a massive amount of pushing pressure. Illinois trying to take these mercenary camps is in some hope that it will boost their paltry 21 skull golem. <laughs> Yeah, right now, just looking at Berkeley, it's a question of what they want to do. And if I'm them, I'm going to go ahead and push here. You have Savannah, so remember, she's great at pushing. You have a massive goal. And for Illinois, they need to be aware of what they can get rid of, what they can cut loose here, because they are at a disadvantage. And they may have to just lose their keep. They're trying their best to defend against it, but we now see Zero and Ultimated posturing outside the area. And Suppy again down the bottom lane, putting some pressure on the goal that is pushing. Here we go. Suppy moving in, so it looks like there might be engaged from Berkeley. Watch for Ultimated and Zero to move in. What? Mr. Burks there with the flank, looking to put the Syndragoza on UC Berkeley at the opportune time. Level 13 is reached. Hook misses. Uh, Kerrigan misses her impaling blade. Here comes the Syndragoza. Everyone gets slow. They're going for ultimated, but he uses the face shift. The amazing flank from Mr. Burks comes in. Ultimated nearly taken out. Suppy now at the front line. Get out of there, Suppy. Mr. Burks manages to fall. Arthas, his durability was not enough to save him. And now we see the Grave Golem on the core. Sadaharu low on health. Dayun low on health, Kakisho has to pull back and we see a healthy lineup of UC Berkeley catapulting forward. Cal Zero eliminates <laughs> Kerrigan and right now it's three on five plus the Golem down to 50%. UC Berkeley dominated in game number one. We're in complete control in game number two and it looks like they're going to be closing it out. GG, a 2-0 victory. The undefeated UC Berkeley will now go up against the almost undefeated Arizona State University in the grand finals.
Remember, Illinois' team comp in that entire f uh, the entire battleground was to pick somebody off and take a number advantage. That didn't happen in the last team fight. And you saw Fan oh immediately God. realize that. He popped his strafe and he chased down members and got a couple of takedowns, and that allowed them to end the game. Great killer instinct there from UZ Berkeley. Now, Wrath with the 90% accuracy wow. with his hooks. He managed to land almost none. Is that completely, is that onus completely on him? I don't think so. I think yeah. there was a great predictive capability <laughs> by UC Berkeley as every time they saw that the stars aligned, like this is a situation where a hook could come in, they managed to already preemptively dodge it. You know, I feel like that last game, there was a moment in there that demonstrated the entirely different level that UC Berkeley is processing on. And that is when, as you pointed out, Grubby, 70 skulls taken. We're done with the mines. We're leaving. We're walking away. Very often, it's easy to get tunnel vision. Most players will say, well, the mines are open. Let's go into the mines, and we're only going to fight in the mines until it's done. Yeah, but that was actually a smart strategy they were doing, but they kind of reneged on that as they did make the first move on those last 30 skulls, and that was almost a chance that Illinois needed to get back into the game, but they were still somewhat behind. Yeah, Fan there got a little bit tipsy, and uh, got, got picked off by he the goal. He there, goal slammed him here, and he <laughs> got stunned, and Rathman came there and walked in, but nicely done from UC Berkeley. A 2-0 victory, as you mentioned earlier, still undefeated. The question is, can they go into a best of five series in the grand finals and do it again? Well, I'd hope to think so, given the fact that in every single match that UC Berkeley has won, Fan is the first player to die in every single circumstance. They know how to, you know, maybe make a mistake here or there, but pull together. And again, that beautiful decision making brings us to the brackets to see UC Berkeley there in the grand finals. It's going to be Arizona State University in a best of five against the literally undefeated, not a single battleground oh. even lost. Every series has been 2-0 for them up to this point, and we got a treat of a chance to see why. Why? I am so curious as to how this series will go. I'm, I'm going to say it's 3-2 either way, but I'm not going to call a winner, man, because these two teams going into the grand finals both deserve to get the free college tuition for the rest of their careers, man, because these guys are both great, but only one, only one can take it. Yeah, there's always a winner and a loser, this cliche goes, but that will be very obvious here as these two are going up against each other. And we couldn't have two more deserving teams here in the grand finals to be fighting it out among such an amazing crowd and against uh, each other, like such formidable opponents. Yeah, I mean, just a nail-biting initial series. And this is a match that many people were predicting would happen. These two clash, and we get the treat to see it live. When we come back, we're going to have Kevin Johnson here at the desk to intro a few extra heroes to let you know a little bit more about how Heroes of the Storm is played. And until then, We'll be right back as we continue Heroes of the Dorm. <laughs> 